Harry was no different from other human beings, at least in a scientific sense. He first existed as water. Life in the womb takes place in water. We need water to survive, and nearly 70% of our body weight is water. Harry had an uncle, a Baptist preacher from Marquette, who performed a full immersion ceremony on him in the Two-Hearted River when he was less than a year old. His parents said his uncle held him under too long and he came up sputtering and gasping. But much to the surprise of everyone there, he coughed up the water, belched like a frat boy, and, and immediately let out a hearty giggle. That story, though impossible for him to remember, convinced him that his body contained more water than most people did. And in that spirit, the spirit of the river would remain inside him for his entire life. He really believed it. That night, Joe recalled the dream Harry had shared with him on the eve of his father's funeral. In it, after his ashes were spread in the Two-Hearted River, Harry's father became a brook trout. The dream detailed what it was like to live in the Two-Hearted River, showing how grains of sand were like snowflakes and how submerged logs had thick green algae on the bottom and never stopped growing. Fish could see above water with the clarity of an osprey, hear human voices, and actually recognize people's faces. The brook trout were the very fish Joe and Harry prized, and adrenaline ran through their bodies whenever they took a large one. Both Harry and Joe shared the belief that a mature brookie was the prettiest fish of all, of all the trout family. With a fan yellow and black top fin, a snow white belly, cream colored worm tracks on the gold of its back, and precisely arranged yellow and red spots on its side. This delicate beauty was also circled by a baby blue halo, proof enough for both of them that it was God's favorite fish.